thanks for tuning in. I am Colleen Lanier, and I am the Executive Director of the Hemp Industries Association. And today we are talking with Larissa Palvek, who is the VP Global Regulatory and Compliance. Um, and we are excited to have a conversation with her today because HIA and the United Natural Products Alliance have come together um, in an MOU to um, basically advocate together for the developing hemp industries. And it allows us to um, share with our audience, our membership, the training that UNPA, UNPA offers, which is uh, really exceptional and I think is going to be of real value as the industry grows. And so I just wanted to um, introduce Larissa and she is uh, the trainer who um, will be available when we um, start uh, working together and sharing that training with HIA members. And so I just want to have a conversation with Larissa and, and let you all tune in and, and learn a bit about what UNPA is and um, what we'll be doing together. And so uh, Larissa, tell us about UNPA and its role in supporting natural products. Thanks, Colleen. Um, it is great to start working together, and I'm, we're really excited about this relationship. And United Natural Products Alliance was established 25 years ago um, in 1992 when the supplement industry was experiencing similar growth pains to what the hemp industry and the hemp extract community is experiencing today. So with um, that time period, there was eight supplement companies in Utah that started working together to make sure that the voices of the industry were heard in Washington and that um, we could have continued access to safe, science-based, and quality supplements. The United Natural Products Alliance now is um, a membership of companies in the dietary supplement space and in the natural product space includes raw material suppliers, contract manufacturers, manufacturers, brand owners, service providers like laboratories, um, industry attorney groups, and consultants. But we all work together to kind of ensure that there's um, the same goals of um, helping people, again, re maintain access to their supplements and to natural products. Right on. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And when you talk about your membership, it sounds a lot like HIA's membership, which is why this MOU is so important. And so this MOU is going to allow us to work collaborative, collaboratively in bringing regulatory education to HIA's members concerning the food, mo the food Standards Modernization Act and trainings and, and this upcoming training, the Preventative Controls Qualified Individuals, PCQI. Um, what does all of that mean and, and why is it so important? There are a whole lot of acronyms when you talk about government regulations. And this year, even in the supplement industry, has been big. There was a lot of guidance documents issued in um, late last year. There was a lot of um, movement. Um, in the in the regulatory space since um, about 2011 when the Food Safety Modernization Act was um, signed. And then there were some compliance states that allowed large companies to be moved into compliance first, followed by the medium sized and small companies. Now all the compliance states have been reached, but as a result of FISMA, which is Food Safety Modernization Oh, I misspoke. <laughs> I said food standards. <laughs> <laughs> the Safety Modernization Act, or FISMA, has seven foundational rules within that. So FDA was tasked with implementing different um, rules to ensure that the food supply was proactive rather than reactive. So we, um, most of the um, regulations prior to um, 2011 were really based on ensuring safety, and depending on the commodity group, they were looking at very specific technical areas. But this is really moving the regulations forward to help with modernization and looking at technology and looking at products and really helping us to, um, as an industry, to ensure that our customers have access to those safe products by using these tracking and trending um, and scientific technologies that are available to ensure that foods are safe, that hazards have been identified, and if there are hazards in the food products, that we can prevent those from occurring before they enter the um, market. And really important. So tell us about PCQI. Well, PCQI is just one piece of those regulations. So I said that there was um, seven foundational rules, and one of them is called 
good manufacturing practices, hazard analysis, and risk-based preventive controls. And that's a big name, but you'll usually hear it abbreviated as the PC rule or the preventive controls rule. And in the preventive controls rule, it states that you have to have a preventive controls qualified individual. That's the acronym of a PCQI. And a PCQI is responsible for managing your food safety plan within your organization. So let's break it down into some simple pieces that if you are food, then you have to be compliant with FISMA and the preventive controls rule. And if you have a dietary supplement or a dietary supplement ingredient, those products are also classified as food by the FDA. So the preventive controls qualified individual will look at all those pieces, your foods and your ingredients, and they'll determine what are the risks that are potentially hazardous in, in those products. And they're looking all the way back to the supplier. The original supplier is um, where it's grown, where it's harvested, how it was transported, how it was processed. How are you processing it? And you look at all of those elements and you determine where are hazards reasonably likely to occur. And if there are hazards identified, then you would implement a preventive control to reduce or eliminate that hazard. And that's where your PCQI comes in. They are writing and implementing that plan, which is your food safety plan. That's really important to know and understand. And thank you for sharing that. Larissa, I happen to know that you're a former FDA investigator. And when, you know, when our industry hears the word FDA, um, they seem to freak out. <laughs> but um, I think it's a real advantage um, to, to have you um, working uh, with UNPA and now also working with us to share your knowledge. And so I'm curious, you know, how does that experience lend to your ability to recognize those challenges in the hemp industries? Um, and, and what we're facing right now. Well, as an FDA investigator, I never arrived at one facility in eight years that said, I'm glad to see you. So that's a little sad. But when I left the industry, or when I left the FDA and I rejoined industry, um, one of the biggest pieces that I took back with me was that most companies that I visited even if they were um, in violation for many of the rules and regulations, many of those organizations were really willing and able to make the, the corrections that were necessary. But as an investigator, I wasn't able to provide that consulting. I wasn't able to help them to, to move into compliance. I was really only there to cite them for the negatives. And that was, um, that's heartbreaking at times because there, you, could, you could see from their documentation and their efforts that often companies were really close to understanding um, how to move themselves into compliance, but they just weren't there yet. And some of those deficiencies were critical enough that um, from a regulatory standpoint, it, it looked bad. And at times it was dangerous. So um, now back on the outside, as you would say, I, I want to help people to understand how to implement the rules, not only to read them, because all of us can read, but how do you implement the rules? How do you establish the written documentation? How do you implement the monitoring procedures that the FDA would expect? And, and how do you um, communicate effectively with the investigators so that um, they can understand your processes and you can understand the regulations in a way that we can all meet, meet in the middle? Great. And so the second part of that question was, you know, how, how, what challenges do you recognize that the hemp industry has currently? Because we, we know that it's been a cottage industry. That's, you know, the right. term we've been throwing around for the last five years. And we're, there's still a lot of that going on and people just now entering the space because they see that hemp is the new green rush. Um, but they, you know, really, we want to make sure that qualified individuals are coming in and, and, and taking up these projects and building these businesses. But what are some of those um, challenges that you see that we have currently? Yes. Well, what I've, I've basically been on a hemp tour for the last year, and I've entered this space really out of a um, need. Um, our membership wanted to understand hemp. Um, and we're being contacted by a lot of hemp extract companies that want to know how to enter the dietary supplement space. So this is kind of a great opportunity for both sides, um, the hemp organization, um, HIA and UNPA, because we understand supplements well, you understand hemp well, and how can we help each other? And some of the challenges I've found 
in um, the meetings and tours um, that I've done in the last year is that a lot of companies have a very um, early understanding of GMP. Some companies don't even recognize GMPs yet and are operating under kind of a restaurant um, or a commercial kitchen type operation, which is great for some um, food products that would be served at like a retail or restaurant level, but this is not the space that you need to be in if you're trying to distribute your hemp extracts or your hemp products. So good manufacturing practice is really the basic level of operating procedures that you need to um, ensure that you're following to be compliant with federal regulation. And then you also have to decide, are you a food product, which has a separate set of regulations for good manufacturing practices, or are you a dietary supplement? Because if you're, depending on which avenue you choose, you have very separate regulations and very distinct responsibilities. And um, some of the deficiencies are challenges, as you said, um, I'm finding is that some organizations just don't understand that there are regulations um, and even um, understanding the difference between food regulations and supplement regulations. And that's kind of where we want to help is how can we help your community to enter the market, to do it well, and to understand the federal regulations and the responsibilities for dis distributing those products? Fantastic. Um, yeah, I think we have been operating under this uh, very um, tiny opening for the industry through the 2014 Farm Bill, and that's been so wonderful to pave the way for hemp, um, but now we have this opportunity to be, um, you know, an, an industry on its legs in the U.S., and so in order to get there, we're going to have to um, learn so much more about um, your industry and others along the way. Um, and I think it's fantastic that UNPA also has a great handle on the, uh, you know, food regulations because for the hemp industries, it's not just all about CBD extract for us. Um, this is also a food product um, by right. way of its seed, its seed oil. And so there are a, a lot of uh, there's a lot of good value here um, in working with your organization and um, and tapping into your expertise. Um, so that's what you've been seeing going on, you know, in the last year. Um, you know, we've got this upcoming meeting where the FDA is going to be talking about uh, regulating CBD, um, you know, and I don't know that well, I'd like to know, I guess, if you had any vision about what you thought the outcome might be for that, although that might be a little um, too crystal ball, which who knows. Um, but I would like to know what, you, what your thoughts are on that. And then, you know, what do you see, see the future being for um, the hemp industry? The future of the hemp industry, it seems that consumers are really driving this market at this point, right? I mean, the sales are astronomical. They're growing exponentially. And I'm not sure um, that that's going to turn around. Um, one of the biggest challenges is if we look back at those regulations that we just spoke about is if there is a safety challenge that hits the mass media, I think that's going to shift everything. So that's why I think it's really important that we all work together on these regulations and ensuring that products are safe, reliable, and um, compliant. But what my crystal ball says, I mean, it's really hard to say what FDA is thinking because it, you... Um, the FDA last week during the meeting that I attended that was related to dietary supplement innovation, um, Stephen Tabe, who's the director of Office of Dietary Supplement Programs, he clearly stated his position on CBD. So we'll see what the meeting says in at the end of the month because they're trying to find a regulatory pathway and they keep communicating that they're trying to find a regulatory pathway. Um, but for now, what it appears um, is that the whole hemp extracts that are not manipulated for any concentration of any one component, those seem to be um, doing well in the market and are not being questioned at this point by regulators. It's when you really start concentrating, purifying, extracting, or fortifying with any of those cannabinoids. So trying to keep it as, I don't know if we want to call it broad spectrum or full spectrum, but ensuring that you have a naturally occurring ratio of the cannabinoids, the terpenes, and the omega fatty acids. I mean, there's, there's a lot of great elements in a hemp extract. And, and I think um, 
right now, the market seems to be only focusing on one of those. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, great point. Um, and, and I think that's really important to note. We're hearing that um, there are companies out there being very innovative, but they're creating a synthetic uh, CBD. And, you know, that's very concerning because the question in my mind is sort of becoming, you know, is does hemp have a place in all product categories or is CBD the product category? And it does seem like there is that that CBD is eclipsed and I just wrote an article about this but that CBD is eclipsed hemp and that's and and I think that's um very short-sighted because I think we've got an opportunity for um hemp as as a whole plant and all of its components and there'll be markets for um a variety of of, of all of those chemical compounds even I know their company is exploring different ones now so um, I think the future is exciting for HIA, and we're really grateful to um, be able to, again, tap into your knowledge, Larissa. So um, for all the viewers out there, there's a PCQI training coming up on uh, June 26th through 28th in Westminster, Colorado, which is a, a suburb of Denver, I believe. And UNPA is offering a $200 discount to HIA members, which is fantastic. Thank you for that. And um, so. Larissa, can you tell us what our members can expect to take away from this training? Well, the training is intense. It's two and a half days. It's 20 hours of what the FDA defines as standardized curriculum and the regulation. And I just happen to have my manual sitting here, but this is the book that we're going to go through. And it's, it's, it's 400, I think, 69 pages. It's 16 Ooh. chapters, appendix. It's very intensive. We covered these chapters um, to help you understand the full breadth of GMPs. Um, there's going to be one chapter on GMPs. It's going to explain to you what is the um, Food Safety Modernization Act. And it's specifically, we're going to be focusing on preventive controls. While we go through the preventive control chapters, you're going to learn how to evaluate for hazards. You're going to learn how to build a food safety plan. You're going to understand the records and how to implement the records. And then we will work with some very specific examples. So during this um, standardized curriculum, they use an example, it's an egg omelet all the way through the book. And I have to cover the standardized curriculum because I'm a certified instructor through the Food Safety Preventative Controls Alliance. And because this is standardized curriculum as defined in the regulation, I can't modify that part. But we add a lot of information to our training um, to help our members and the industry and now HIA members as well to understand how do you implement this in your operation because it doesn't help you when you take this book home with an egg omelet model. So we've built a model for hemp and hemp extracts and with that when you leave the course you not only understand the regulation and how to implement the regulation you also have a food safety plan very specific to hemp and hemp extracts and we hope wow. that that is kind of an additive incentive to um, companies in this space to understand the compliance, understand safe processing, understand federal regulation. And um, then we can work through that together in the course and you can take that back with you and start implementing these regulations within your own organization. Oh, fantastic. That sounds really great. I, 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 I am a little shocked at how big the book is and how much you're going to cover. <laughs> Um, but this is great because this is, this is the norm. This is what's going right. on in the industry and is being required. And if, if, if our industry can go ahead and start learning these things and self-regulating, we'll be in a much better position, um, you know, should the federal government say, yes, absolutely, this is your criteria, which we fully right. expect is going to happen um, right. and should be the case. And right. FDA so, perspective is always public health and safety. So if you can demonstrate that you understand the regulations, that you're willing and able to voluntarily comply, that's always to the benefit of any organization. It doesn't matter which segment you're in. But for the hemp industry specifically, right now is the best time to demonstrate to the FDA that you're you're able and willing to do to follow the regulations that the food industry and the supplement industry and any of the other commodity groups. Are currently following. So I think it's just a, a matter of spreading the news and, and sharing the information. 
And by attending the course, you also receive a certificate um, from Food Safety Preventative Controls Alliance, who is the organization that manages this um, through grant funding from the FDA. But that will, um, it is a certificate showing that you have received the training under the standardized curriculum as expected by the FDA, and that you are, um, you have the training as a preventive controls qualified individual or a PCQI. Great. Well, Rosa, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. So yeah, I, I just want to, yeah, always, right? Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the sponsors of this UNTA training and give a shout out to Trace Gaines, the New Hope Network, and NOCO Hemp Expo for supporting the training and especially UNPA for extending this member benefit to the Hemp Industries Association. And so with that, I guess that wraps it up. And to all of you viewers, thank you so much for taking the time to learn about uh, UNPA, uh, its relationship now with HIA, and this upcoming PCQI training, uh, June 26th through the 28th in Westminster, Colorado. How can, how can folks uh, sign up? If you go to our website, which is unpa.com, and click on the events, um, you'll be able to link directly to the enrollment. Great. And for all of you out there who are HIA members, um, there has gone an, e an email has gone out with the code that will get you that $200 discount. So make sure you get that code before you go and register. Thanks so much. Look forward to seeing you all. Have a good day.